Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Stembridge. Present. Mr. Valencia. Present. Mr. Langham. Present. Ms. Bedbraza. Present. Mr. Aiken. Present. Thank you. The floor is yours, Mr. Stembridge. Thank you, Madam Chair, for starting off with the 11 for the 11:30 rediscussions. The first case is case of BOA 144-8246 with the address of 24 Common Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain? Uh, yes, we are. Thank you. So, Go last. Go okay, ahead. thank you. Scott Perry from 24 Common Street in Charlestown. Uh, we uh, have proposed a curb cut for the back of our property, um, which backs up onto Elwood Street. Um, we have um, you know, received approval from the Public Works Department uh, on 10-12-2022 from Ashley there, um, and Public Works is awaiting ISD approval as we understand it. Um, now, we're looking to add the curb cut um, in light of the fact that um, a lot of off-street parking in our neighborhood has been um, reduced over the last couple of, of years. We're also looking to add it so that we could have um, an EV charging station for ultimately having an electric vehicle in line with kind of a city's greener goals. Um, and we feel, um, you know, the project will not change the kind of look and feel of the back patio that we have, which has tree canopy and currently has a fence and we will maintain all of that existing um, structure. You know, we feel that there is, uh, you know, good precedence here. Our, our neighbors two doors down have a similar curb cut, actually a larger curb cut um, that is also goes out onto Elwood Street. So we believe there is, is precedence um, um, there. And, and so um, that's kind of the, the quick backdrop to this. Um, we've received opposition and on a prior hearing related to uh, uh, comments that the, the street is the iciest street in Charlestown. And I think my only rebuttal to that would be that, you know, the public works trucks are up and down the street on a weekly basis. Those that are opposed are bring their cars up and down that street on a regular basis. So I believe that the, the street is no different than any other street in Charlestown or the, the city of Boston. Um, the opposed to raise the issue that the headlights will um, inflect into the windows of those across. The, the headlights would be well below the, the windows of those apartments across the street. And then you'll also hear that this will create a ripple effect and everybody on Elwood Street will want um, a parking spot when the reality is, is that the, any of the other uh, properties do not have the appropriate space to, to do so. so just looking to bring this back to the to the board for um, approval. And again, we've received approval from the Public Works Department and you have our plan here today. Thank you. Can you, uh, you we've heard this a couple of times, at least some of us have. Uh, can, can you uh, remind us, uh, uh, there's a street light, uh, I believe, uh, where you're near your proposed curb cut. What's your plan for that or what, yeah, what is your plan for that? <laughs> Right, we talked to uh, the Public Works Department, Ashley there, and we have five feet of clearance between the proposed cut of, of 10 feet uh, to that light post as, as marked on the plan here. So there is sufficient space such that if we wanted to um, widen the, the curb cut to, to 12 feet, we could, we could do so, but there is sufficient clearance according to the Public Works Department. Okay, and just uh, for for my edification, you have not mentioned EV vehicles previous uh, to this. Yeah. Uh, is this a new uh, uh, kind of request or? Correct, that's part of the motivation for us is ultimately having an electric vehicle charging station and, and having an electric vehicle. We do not currently own an electric vehicle today. Okay, other questions from the board? Yes, question. So at this moment, is there uh, off street parking? And the question is, I'm just thinking you are creating one parking spot, but you are removing one off street parking to create the driveway or not? No, so there are, there are no off street parking spots on, on Elwood Street. So we'd be creating one net spot for Charlestown by with the addition of this off street parking. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the board? 
Hearing none, uh, we'll take public can I, testimony. Can I make a can I make a comment as a neighbor? Uh, we're we're going to get to public testimony. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So with that, uh, can yeah. I have public testimony? We'll start with uh, public officials or representatives. Sean. Uh, good, good morning, man. Chair, members of the board. Sean Breen with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, an abundance meeting was held on June 13th at 6 p.m. to 24 Common Street. Uh, since that time, this office has received four letters in support and eight letters in uh, opposition. Uh, those opposed, uh, their main concerns are with privacy and safety, as alluded to by the applicant. Um, with that, we would defer our judgment to the board. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Caitlin Stapleton from Councilor Murphy's office. Um, our office has received letters from the community and neighbors in opposition to this project. The concerns are mostly based around privacy, safety and maneuverability, and issues around snow removal. They believe that this will set a bad precedent if the curb cut is approved, and according to plan, Charlestown creating new curb cuts should be avoided. Because of this, um, the council would like to go on record in opposition. Thank you. Bob? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Sebastian Power from Councilor Coletta's office. And our office has not heard any support of this project. And in the country, we've heard substantial opposition to it. Based on that, the council would like to go on opposition of this project. Thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council at large, Michael Flaherty. Uh, just based upon the opposition that our office has received, council to go record opposition. Yep. Bob? Yes, uh, Madam Chair and members of the board, Bob D'Amico, <clears throat> Boston Transportation Department. Um, it's a little tight, but it does work. And uh, luckily, there's no parking on either side. So from an operational standpoint, uh, the plan does work. Thank you. Thank you. Other raised hands? Sorry, yep, I'll get to Kathleen and then Melissa. Hi, my name is Kathleen Lacey. I live at 11. Hi, I'm Kathleen Lacey. I'm opposed to this project. Um, I live at 11 Elwood Street. I'm a direct uh, neighbor right across the street. Um, the bedroom on the first, the biggest concern is the privacy. Um, we believe the headlights would shine into a, a bedroom and a living room. Um, that we don't have, we don't experience that right now, but with the uh, nighttime and, you know, the headlights would shine into those bedrooms in the living room. Also, just the the size of the street, it's pretty narrow um, to be backing in and out. It's just a safety concern. If there's ever an accident, I feel like the car would end up in a living room or a bedroom. Um, so we are in opposition to this project. Thank you. Melissa? I'm Melissa Brennan from 8 Chestnut Street. I've spoken before. I've also spoken to the applicant. Um, I never said that this was the ICS street in Charlestown. So just to clarify, what we said as a concern was that a 9 and 11 Elwood Street is a three-story building, and it casts a shadow on the street. Therefore, when it snows, we hardly get a plow down there, and it remains very icy because it gets very little sunlight. That was the concern. The, where the other parking spot is, further down Common Street, their yard is completely open to Common Street. Their, their, yeah, their parking is next to their home. Therefore, sunlight shines in that area. So that was the concern about ice. Secondly, I don't know what facts they use to say that the lights wouldn't shine in the bedroom, but I did extensively tell them that the building is lower grade there, and it goes up, um, and the other windows on the other side of the building are higher. So where this particular spot would be, there would be headlights into that, um, that space, and those are the concerns. And then nobody mentioned, I know BTT is on the call, but this is a fire lane, and there are no parking signs on the street, and I don't know what evidence they have to say that the other neighbors would not then go and do this because the house that's directly next to them was built at the same time it's a duplex they have the exact same space to do this parking spot as well as the Dunedins who are at the end of Elwood Street have a much bigger space so I think it would set a bad precedent and again plan child sound says you should avoid curb cuts at all costs thank, thank you very much no additional raised hands is that Lauren with the raised hands oh Lauren I'm sorry this is on the panelist side are you the yes, hi. Um, I'm Lauren from 5 Elwood Street, and um, 
I am in favor of this. I'm, a, again, as a, a neighbor on Elwood Street, and I don't think any of the lights shining in windows would be any concern. Um, there's already a decent amount of, you know, traffic that people who live on Elwood drive up and down to kind of unload and load up their car on their daily basis. Um, so traffic is not an issue or lights in cars. Well, I don't think you'll see any difference. Um, and as well as we've also had in the number of years, um, parking spots on the street taken away from us. Um, uh, particularly on the corner of um, Putnam and Common. Um, so I think this is a rare situation where you can add a parking spot. So I think we should take advantage of it. Thank you. I have no additional ways to answer. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board? Hearing none, may I have a motion? <laughs> I'll make a motion to, to approve. Uh, it's appropriate context to have, um, you know, small parking spaces on a smaller streets like this. So motion to approve. Is there a second? <clears throat> second. Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Betabraza. I'm going to vote no due mm. to counselor and um, a butter opposition. Mr. Aiken. Uh, yes. The chair also votes no. Uh, the motion does not carry. Is there a second motion? Open to deny without presence. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yes. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. <laughs> yes. Ms. Benabraza. No, because I, I'm not sure how they can improve on it to come back to the board to hear the case again. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Aiken. Also no for the same reasons as Ms. Betabraza. I'm gonna vote uh, no as well. So this motion also does not carry. Uh, do we have another motion? I like to put for a motion of denial. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. No. Mr. Valencia? No. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Betabraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? No. Okay, well, none of our motions have carried, Javier. Yeah, I think it I'm... has to go to a full board now, like uh, defer, a motion defer. Mm -hmm. No. I, no. The the board can defer it. This is a full board. The this board can make board. a motion to defer it, or I would suggest just to do a dismissal without prejudice and they can uh, denial speak. without prejudice. Correct. Denial without prejudice. I, I apologize. Sorry. Um, so they can work with their neighbors at that point. I'm I'm going to put for a motion to defer to allow for a little bit more adequate time to do additional outreach to the counselors and. Um, and to the neighbors now that we've heard new information such as the EV charging, maybe there's a gate or a situation that can also address the concerns of floodlights going into the units. Is there a second? I, I would second. suggest a date for February 6, 2024 to give enough time. Second. Ma Madam Chair. Who's, who's speaking? Uh, it's, it's not period of 24. Uh, uh, yes, sir. If, just to clarify, there there would be a gate um, behind the parking spot. So, if that if there is concern there about the lights, there will be a gate and a fence similar to what it is that would block any lights. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Where am I? Am I? Was there motion a second? To, motion to defer. Okay, there was a second, right? Okay, Mr. Stembridge. Yeah. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. Uh, yes. Ms. Betabraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. 
The chair reluctantly votes yes, the motion carries. Next case. Uh, we're skipping over the next two listed cases and we're going on to case BOA 148717 with the address of 229 to 233 Gordon Street. The applicant, the applicant and the representatives present. Yes, Mr. Savage. Please proceed. So good, af good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Derek Small. I have a business address of 51 Dobson Road. With me today is David Freed from Chu Architects and Associates. And today we're here seeking relief to change the, the occupancy of the building from a laundromat and dry cleaners to a laundromat and six residential units by erecting a three-story addition. Um, the zoning subdistrict here is an LC, which is local convenience, and our lot size is approximately 5,600 square feet. Madam Chair, with regard to the violations, uh, we're seeking relief today. Uh, we're seeking a conditional use permit as the residential um, use in the LC is a conditional use. Um, we're seeking relief for off-street parking um, as we have none on site as the, as the property faces Bowdoin Street which is a major thoroughfare in Dorchester and is accessed by two major uh, MBTA lines, which are the 15 to Ruggles and the 17 to Andrew. Um, the FAR, the FAR requirement here is a 1.0. We are proposing 2.3. And with regard to the building height, um, the building height requirement in the zoning subdistrict is 40 feet and our building is approximately 43 feet, nine inches. So we're approximately um, three feet nine inches over the required required height. Um, with regard to the units themselves, um, there are three bedroom units with two baths, and they range in size from 1,300 square feet to 1,400 square feet. Um, the first floor, um, which is being shown on ground floor level, will consist of the laundry mat, elevator, and entrance to the building itself. Uh, we are providing bike racks and the trash will be stored in the basement. Go to the next slide, please. Um, the units, we are proposing two units on each floor. Um, as you can see in this diagram, uh, unit 201 is approximately 1,400 square feet. Unit 202 is approximately 1,300 square feet. And again, three beds, two baths. Um, if you go or if you scroll down, um, we, could, we can talk about the height. All of the units are pretty much uniform on all three floors. Um, with regard to the building height again, uh, we are at proposing 43.9, um, which is common for the, for the sub-district. If you scroll down, we have pictures of um, buildings on the same block that are approximately four or five stories tall. That being one, if you scroll down more recently, um, these were approved by Dorchester Food Co-op, which is uh, on the same block, which also goes up four stories. Um, was was approved less than a year ago, um, and so the the height requirement or the height that we are proposing is not at all uh, uncommon for for the district. Um, we can stop there, Madam Chair. We can answer any questions that the board might have. Thank you, Mr. Small. Questions from the board? Yeah. So, um, um, in terms of <clears throat> excuse me, reading the BPDA recommendation. They just cited um, if there's any way to lower the building by, I guess, three foot nine that you wouldn't necessarily need a variance for height. What's um, what's your floor to ceiling, you know, on the ground floor and then at each of the top three stories? Um, if, if we can scroll back, David Freed, I don't know if he's been up, upgraded to a panelist, but I think the if we yes, go I'm to here. The basement, basement level, okay, David, you might want to answer that. So the, um, uh, hi, my name is David Freed. I'm an architect at Chew and & Company. And um, the existing condition is that the uh, first floor has a very tall ceiling height. And um, uh, from the, uh, the slab to the top of the roof, it's 14 feet. Okay, um, so that's what's throwing the additional three feet? Yes, okay. yeah. And, and we wanted to keep the height to enable, um, uh, you know, flexibility for whatever commercial space goes into the other, the other unit. 
Okay, great. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, I got one. I just yes, want sir. to know, is it, it <clears throat> excuse me, I got a cold. Is it any handicap units in this uh, a building that's available? Yeah, all, all these units are designed to be group one and each floor has elevator access. Yes. Thank you. Uh, with that, may I have public testimony? <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, my name is Ashley Golds from the Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, our office did hold a voters meeting for 229 to 223 Bowdoin Street uh, back in May. Um, the project did present to Meeting House Hill twice, uh, Bowdoin Geneva Main Street and the Greater Bowdoin Geneva Neighborhood Association, that they, they did gain the support of Main Street. Um, Greater Bowdoin Geneva did um, show their opposition with uh, due to the density that they thought uh, could be less. Uh, with that, we defer to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Io, representing the Office of City Councilor Brian Worrell. And in regards to this project, as was stated, they did have support from um, Greater Board, Greater Board in Geneva, as well as the Main Streets and the Cambodian Association. And with that, the council would also like to follow suit and support. Thank you. One second, just want to make sure I got all the raised hands. Um, I think that's everyone. Yep, we're also I have no additional raised hands. Thank you. Uh, any other questions from the board? I thought there was something different. I probably would. With that, may I have a motion? Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review on next year. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm not sure. Ms. Benabraza? Yes. I would it Mr. Aiken? Yes. There are also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you, Madam Chair. Members of the board, have a good day. I don't know. I get to just Next, we have case BOA 1443137 with the address of 43 to 45 Stanton Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Yes. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Please uh, remember, I'll, I'll recuse myself and step back from this. Thank you. Thank you. So just a note, we are now a five-member board. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Mark Lacasse, Lacasse Law, 75 Arlington Street in Boston. Uh, legal counsel to the owner and project proponent um, who is with us, Ricky Bellavo from Volney Capital. And also on the hearing is Eric Zacherson from Context, our architect. Um, that's not the right presentation that's on the screen. If we could have Stanton Street and the plans, that would be great. Um, but Madam Chair, members of the board, this building that is before you today is the convent parish house of the St. Matthew Church, which was closed by the Archdiocese in October of 2020. And the building has been vacant since then. Um, it is part of a larger church campus, but the other component parcels of the church campus, namely the large, much larger church building, are not part of this presentation. Um, this building is what was, as I said, the convent parish house, and that is the subject of the proposal. Um, do we have the plans, please? Oh, if we could start with that, that first, the first page of the, yes. Yeah, so um, there's been much community process, and we have responded to the old BPDA recommendation, which was based on the original submission um, and between myself and Eric Zacherson, the architect, will explain to you all of the changes that have been made. But the revised plans were submitted and reviewed by the examiner, and an updated refusal letter was issued in, uh, on November 6, and that is what is before you today. As a result of the process, we reduced the parking um, to 16 spaces with one handicapped space to eliminate a prior building code refusal letter that had been issued. Uh, we reduced the size of one of the units to accommodate that from three bedrooms to two bedrooms and responsive to one of the BPDA recommendations, we added hip roof to the rear addition 
um, behind the existing structure to be more sympathetic with the existing structure and with the much larger church next door, which you will see on elevation. So as a result of those changes, no new zoning violations are created, but for the height violation was increased by about four feet as a result of the hip roof, but the structure of the building itself um, and that portion which houses the residential units did not change in height. Um, next slide, please. So th this is the existing site plan. Um, the little wing building that you see there on the right-hand side of the site plan is what is um, what was a chapel that will be converted into residential space as will the remainder of the existing convent building. The existing site has uh, asphalt parking across the entire front of the building with parking spaces. We're going to eliminate that, restore the front yard to its original condition. Um, this, was, this parish complex was constructed in 1899. Um, we searched the historic records and found some great photographs of the, of the front yard as it previously existed. So we're doing a complete restoration of the front yard to green space and planting trees and pulling all the parking to the back of the building under the proposed addition, as again you'll see on elevation. Next slide, please. So this is the proposed site plan, which shows restoration of the front yard as not parking. Um, and there's a better plan that will show you some of the um, proposals for that. All the parking is being pulled around to the back, you can see, and behind the chapel extension there on the side. And importantly, uh, again, as part of our research from Mass Historical Society, the you know the goal of this project has always been preservation and restoration of the existing building. Um, even though this is not a historic district, and even though it could be subject to demolition, and in fact, some in the neighborhood even suggested that uh, my client's goal has always been to preserve this very beautiful brick building as an institutional neighborhood asset. Next slide. Next slide is the proposed site plan. So Stan Street is a slightly different orientation here. Stan Street is on the right hand side of the screen, which is the front of the building. You can see the front yard is being restored to green space, walkways to the front entrance, planting of trees, and the existing building is being preserved. Uh, with the addition, there are 14 units that are being proposed. Two of those will be IDP units and 16 parking spaces, including the one HP space, which is shown there as space number 12, and that eliminated our building code um, refusal from the prior submission. Next slide. And skip ahead a couple. These are just demolition. Uh, yeah, right here is good. So the... Um, I'll turn it over to Eric Zacherson to talk about the floor plans and the programming of the existing building and the new building, but I did want to highlight, and Eric can talk about, that the BPDA recommendation um, based on the prior plans contained very specific suggestions, and we've incorporated literally 100% of the, those recommendations into the revisions. Um, historic preservation uh, was recommended. That is the, indeed the primary goal of this project. Restoration of the green front yard, removal of parking, we've done that. Design uh, should match the character and context of the building, including materiality. And with the addition of the hip roof, you'll see on elevation that the, that, that has been achieved. Uh, the hip roof was added to be consistent with the convent and the much larger, taller church building next door. Uh, the parking is now within the BTD recommended, recommended range of 14 to 21 spaces at 16 with the one HP space. Um, alignment of window fenestration was recommended and you'll see on elevation that that has now been achieved. Uh, a bike room has been added with 16, parking, uh, 16 bicycle parking spaces and um, continuing de design review was suggested given the size of the uh, proposed addition. We're certainly amenable, as that, amenable to that as a proviso. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Eric Zacherson and to talk about the floor plans of the 14 units, uh, 12 of which are two bedrooms, one one bedroom and one three bedroom, again, two IDP units, 
and Eric can talk about the elevations and the design considerations that he brought to bear responsive to both the community uh, feedback that we got and to the BPDA prior recommendation. Um, so, uh, Eric. Uh, thank you, uh, Mark. Would you mind scrolling back one slide so we can show the ground floor? So on the right side of this uh, drawing is Stanton Street. Um, one of the main things we want to do is keep, preserve the windows and, and actually preserve and use the doors that were uh, previously existing. So on the right side of the drawing, you see the existing staircase and the existing primary entrance, which we are going to continue to use as a primary entrance. That'll be the entrance for the lobby. Um, and you see the lobby kind of snake through the building to connect to the, uh, the new staircase that we're adding. Um, you see to the south of that is the chapel space and we've designed a unit especially to to preserve that to use as much of the uh, existing windows as possible so you have a two bed um, unit on the lower right portion of the plan and a two bed unit on the uh, upper left portion of the plan um, one of as mark said one of the early uh, comments was to convert uh, to take that unit down from being three bed to two bed in order to incorporate the bike parking space that you see in the upper right um, adjacent to the lobby. Um, there is an existing double door uh, and we're going to use that as the primary and as the entrance for the bike parking and have that connect directly into the lobby uh, which you see kind of in the middle of the page. Around the back of the building um, you see the 13 parking spaces as, as they remain and um, all of the space to the right between the, the, um, the existing building and the sidewalk will be converted um, back to green space uh, as it was historically, but uh, has been surface parking for, uh, for the recent history. Um, next slide. And so the footprint of that, other than the staircase, is, is the same as the existing footprint. On this level, about on level two, we uh, are carefully adding um, space at the back of the property so over the surface parking lot in the rear um, and preserving the um, the elevation that you see across the top of the page the, the elevation you see on the right side of the page which is facing stanton street and the uh, the shape of the roof uh, on those two faces and then at the rear of the property we we elevate um, three units over the sidewalk oh, over the surface parking so on this level you have five units, um, two of them in the existing building, and um, you know, on, in the left in the darker, the darker um, um, hatch zone, which are uh, two, two bedrooms and, and the one, one bedroom. Um, and th those are new construction, basically adjacent and behind the building in order to kind of really preserve and, and allow the building to continue to, to shine at the existing building. Next slide. And this is the pattern as you as we go up the uh the lower right the space above the chapel becomes a roof zone on the upper right we have a kind of large deep zone so that is our one three bedroom unit it's over 2200 square feet so it's quite a large unit um, uh, for the uh, within the renovation but given the configuration of the walls which you see is kind of the light walls on the right and on the top those are all to remain and the window openings are to remain so it, it gave us kind of a large unit and we're you know, making the most of it with a, a large open um, living kitchen dining area and three bedrooms on the left side of this you see the three um, new construction units again these are elevated above the surface park and they're kind of designed to be uh, as uh, recede behind the existing building as much as possible next slide and on this one, you see uh, at, at the fourth level, we only have the addition where kind of above the roof and would have allowed or uh, maintained the existing hip roof for, for both the kind of two-story chapel and three-story um, uh, portion of the building. Next slide. And you can kind of see this. So you can see on the left side here, the, the higher roof the upper right, the third level roof, and then the lower right, the second level roof. Next slide. It becomes a little bit clearer once we're looking at the elevations. Next slide. So it, hatch, the hatch zone here is the existing masonry um, three and two story building. You see the chapel on the left and the, the, the bulk of the building on the right. Re recess behind that are, are, is our uh, four-story building. And as we mentioned, 
the in the earlier iterations which we had um, thought about trying to keep the building much shorter but the bpa recommendation was to add this hip roof uh, across the top of it in order to to um, echo and complement the existing structure so we've added that roof across the top and though the uh, windows of the new building which you see uh, uh, on the third and fourth floor here don't really um, aren't in the same plane with the rest of the building there was a request that we we aligned them and so we were able to do that and, and reconfigure the units inside so that the windows on this face and when it's presented in two dimensions in two dimensions like this really align uh, up and down um, as you kind of step back from the existing building to the new building next slide Yeah, so it, the existing or the proposed side elevation, you can see how the four story volume on the right sits over the parking um, and the, the um, main uh, elevation of the taller portion of the building is going to be preserved, restored, and, uh, and um, maintained in its configuration. The double door there you see would be to leading to the bike parking area. Next slide. So this is the rear elevation, and you can see this is where you really see our addition. Um, but even at the first floor, you're going to see a lot of the existing uh, construction kind of looking through the parking zone. Next slide. And then this is the um, driveway side. So on the right side of the drawing, you have Stanton Street. You, you're looking kind of across the driveway. You see the chapel and the four-story volume. But you have a three-story volume with the, the existing hip roof and the four-story volume uh, on the left, where the first story is uh, surface parking, and then three levels of uh, units above that, and then the hip roof uh, the, uh, above that that was requested by the BPDA. Next slide. And sectionally, to help kind of describe it, uh, there is an existing basement space. We're not putting any living space in there. It'll be used for building systems. Um, then above that, you see three levels of existing and the existing ceiling and attic. On the right side, you, uh, you see the stair and then our uh, surface parking and three levels above that with the uh, Next slide. And this is... Uh, the question from the beginning, and we, we wanted to respect it, is how does it compare to the existing church next door, um, which is very tall? Um, so you can see the existing church, the existing uh, building that we're uh, attaching to and, and, and um, expanding, and then our building, and we're still just barely above, even with the, the new hip roof, we're still barely above the um, cornice line that is at the top, uh, near the top of that. Um, existing building. Next slide. Or that possibly the last one. And then these are just existing plans for reference if we need them. And just, um, Madam Chair, if I might, on the question of feasibility and why this project has been proposed as 14 units with the four story addition in the back, um, I probably worked on about a half a dozen or so religious institution buildings being converted to residential use and the same issue always arises and that is the sheer cost of conversion of the historic structure that was part of a religious institution into residential dwelling units so again with the historic preservation of the existing building being my client's primary goal um, lots of care and consideration has been giving given to making this project feasible and at 14, we achieved the feasibility. And also at 14, we achieved the two IDP units. And we think that all of the other design changes um, responsive to the BPDA recommendations are um, all considerations that make this a fantastic project. And for your consideration, thank you so much. Thank you. Just a couple of questions for me. It, it, it appears uh, from the BPDA comment that um, you're just 26 square feet shy of a small project review. And so um, um, I guess yeah. what's Yes, yeah, so I'm ha happy to address that. Um, you know, thresholds are thresholds. It's not um, a <laughs> one. And as you know, small project review is largely design review based. It is largely a design review function. 
and as indicated, we, we consent to and, and welcome a proviso for continuing BPDA design review to accomplish those very same purposes. Thank you. And uh, just a question on the parking. So uh, you mentioned a reduction from 19 to 16, and it looks like their feedback was a reduction from the 16 to something else. So I just, can I, can you just comment on that? Yeah, I believe the BPDA's recommendation said following ETD guideline, parking spaces should remain between 14 and 21. Okay. So at 16 with one being the HP space, I think we're right within the BTD guidance range. Okay. Other questions from the board? Are your accessible units on the ground floor and there, is there one or two on the ground floor? Um, for uh, um, MAAB standards, we don't have, we do not have currently a, an accessible unit. This is a, an existing building being reconfigured for residential use, and so is exempt from Group One standards. And having less than twenty units, it's exempt from Group Two standards. So while we're trying to make the first floor units um, accessible, we would have to add a lift outside the building because of the, the elevated nature of the first floor. So at the moment, ne neither of the first floor units are um, the group one accessible simply because there is no route from outside to inside this building without adding an, a, a lift um, or a, an elevator. Or a and so are your IDP units, where are they on, on the floor? Um, that determination has not been made yet. We have to submit um, to the, the approved plans to the BPDA, which of course would also be a proviso of, of any decision here that um, the IDP units be approved by the BPDA and there'd be a separate agreement with the BPDA um, affordable housing agreement. Oh, and by the way, these are home ownership units. This is an opportunity for home ownership um, in this neighborhood, which was a big <clears throat> Um, there'd be a separate agreement with the BPDA, and during that process, we would submit to the IDP staff at the BPDA, and they would guide us in, in determining which of the two units um, would be appropriate. Okay, great. Thank you. One, one additional comment on the owner of the property. I, I, I think it would be great to make an accommodation for a lift to be able to, uh, in the future, have those two units be accessible. So. I'm, uh, I'm open to us adding that into the plan as, a, as something that we're building to accommodate. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, can I have public testimony? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Ross Cochran with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, the proponents for this project have completed their community process. Our office held an abutters meeting in March of this year where nine abutters were in attendance. Uh, they've also met with the local civic association and at this time i've got on file for my records and the zba a letter of opposition from that local civic association at this time we'd like to defer to the sports judgment thank you thank you okay i have a few raised hands um i'll start with start with alice and then go to jackie i'm um, jessica we had a o from councilor Worrell's office okay uh, i see someone from councilor Worrell's office oh, okay yeah. you can go ahead i didn't see your hand raised off. no worries Good evening, Madam Chair, um, members of the board. My name is Ayamide Omuyua from the Office of City Councilor Brown Worrell. In regards to the project, the councilor just wanted to offer his support for it. Oh, thank you. Madam Chair, members of the board, Paul Sullivan, City Council of Michael Flaherty. I think we're going to be able to support them. Okay. Any other elected officials' office? Okay, so we'll go to public. Testimony, Alice. If uh, there's a few raised hands, uh, we just want to try to get to everyone. If you could briefly tell us uh, if you're in support or opposition, and give your name and address. Uh, am I? Can you hear me? Yeah. Alice Nelson. I live on the corner of Norfolk and Stan Street, 217 Norfolk Street. Um, in opposition to the addition here, we're per I'm particularly in opposition to the height. That is a very <laughs> imposing height. And though the um, developer has said it matches up with the height of the church, there's a whole other development that we're looking at and talking with Common Square Neighborhood Development Corporation, who's in the process of buying the rest of the church lots. Um, they're talking about developing um, 77 units of affordable housing and rental, um, affordable rental units. So that for the community, we're looking at two projects 
not just this one. So this is market rate. This is 14 market rate units. Um, and my, our, my children can't afford to live in those market rate units. It's right in a small neighborhood. Stanton Street is a one-way street with single family and two family homes with small yards going all the way down. Um, this proposal towers over the Stanton Street, but it also towers over Euford Street, which is behind. And there's new developments of two family homes behind this. And this four story situation presses back halfway into the parking lot and then raises up to a four story height. It's a walk up. Um, so it's a four story walk up. Um, also, um, the driveway on the left, which was never accentuated by their presentation, where that um, uh, room goes out to the left, and the driveway's to the left, that, dri that driveway is very narrow. I want to say nine feet. I tried to see what the number was on their drawing. I'm not sure, but if you drive your car down there, which we have, and you try to turn around in the back there, the back of your car is basically hanging over the wall that goes into the people on Euford Street's backyards to make that turn, that S around. Um, that's a concern. Um, let me see. The height of the Can you please wrap it up? I think there are other yes, people who want to comment. Thank you. So um, we're, as a community, we're for three floors, 11 units, um, with two being affordable units. But this, in our opinion, this is all in the benefit of the developer. It really doesn't benefit our community to take so much density and put it in a small space. Thank you. And also Brian Worrell's office, we tried to get in touch with him, and he never responded to us. So I'm surprised he's against this. He never spoke with us directly as a community. OK, uh, just go, please. Nadine? Nadine Bradford? Natty. Um, oh, sorry. Hi, everyone. My name is Nadi Rafford. I am one of um, <coughs> husband and I are the homeowners of 69 Stanton Street, and we oppose to the project as a whole. Um, Stanton Street is a very small residential street. It's comprised of two and three families. Um, <coughs> the density, the height of the project, we ha um, this would also increase traffic, and we have some parking concerns. It's a one-way street. Um, so it just doesn't fit the dynamic of the street, the abutters, um, the people who live right next door, I mean, with the size of, and the height of this building, there will be so much lack of sunlight and all of these other concerns. So I oppose. Christina? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, how are you? Um, this is Christian Parent. I um, am speaking on behalf of 42 Stand Street and 63 Stand Street. 42 Stand Street is um, directly across the street. That is my grandfather's house, and 63 Stand Street is my parents' house. So, um, parents were on the street for over 55 years at this moment. Um, we've been living on the street for a long time. Uh, just want to just give some background on I used to go I was a student at St. Matthew's so that that entire project and the history in the neighborhood is very um, very important to me I'm a part of Rock Rock sent a letter of opposition as of neighbors we are opposed to the density on the small lot we are opposed to adding the fourth floor especially adding the fourth floor because um, if we are thinking about the, I call we call it growing up the parking lot. So you think about the parking lot. I am two houses down, and then neighbor who is an abutter, direct abutter, is the yellow and white house directly next to it. It would be surpassing the height of my home, um, and the only tall building is the other builders, developers that were, that are also we're looking at into that are coming in to do more work on the block and it's going to be a lot of work. We can agree to three floors, 11 units market rate, home ownership and two affordable home ownership. Over 30 opposition um, petitions have been sent out to the zoning board and many have also sent in opposition emails. Um, this is something I think we need to regroup. I, 
to just as a community because this is not benefiting us. This is only benefiting the developers. We can go back to the drawing board and see what we can come up with. But at the moment, I do, we do not want to move forward with any of this work um, due to the history in the specific space. Um, <clears throat> and Rock also, this was a place that Rock used to meet and the fact that we didn't have the opportunity to even be able to make it something ours for so long all the time happening in Dorchester like we've been saying throughout these meetings that people want to come in and develop and develop and develop and not thinking about the communities although there are homes the homes are good for the communities we need to respect the communities that are coming in that these people are coming into so if you want to come in to the community and make it better respect hey, our thank kids. you ma'am please wrap up thank you I'm done thank you thank you Chris? Hi, this is uh, Chris Krull. Uh, I'm at 23 Thelma Road. Um, I'm calling in support of the developer. I think they've done a good job of repurposing an existing building instead of tearing it down and trying to build something new. Um, it also brings more <laughs> units to the city when it's a vacant building right now and not being used. Um, so I just want to give my support. Thank you. Thanks. And Mark? Mr. Mark, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Mark Sabatik. I'm a Dorchester resident at uh, 26 Tillsboro Street. Um, I'd like to voice my support for the project. I really do like the adaptive reuse nature of the project. I think that's a fantastic way to provide more housing. I also like that we've eliminated the, uh, the, the parking in the front yard. And just finally, I, that I think this is a very thoughtful pro proposal that's put forth um, that will provide a lot of new housing to, to you know, what is an existing vacant building. So I appreciate your time and consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, um, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Jackie McGee. I'm a resident on um, Concept Ave in Dorchester, and I am in support of this project. Um, I believe the developer has done a fantastic job in designing a project that maintains the current historic look in the feel of the old parish, um, but while also addressing a need for additional housing that we have in the area. Um, unfortunately, we have to go up or out um, in a lot of instances, and I do believe that the plan that they made um, accomplished that. Um, additionally, I appreciate the, the plan to replace the hardscaping in the front of the property um, and the thought and effort that was taken to restore it to green space. Thank, Thank you. you. I have no additional raised hands. Any additional questions from the board? Yes, I do. I just want one more kind of clarification. Um, on the and if you can pull up the the, the first uh, the parking plan, uh, that would be great. Um, you have an accessible space at the rear, and um, it seems like you have access to unit one. I don't see any stairs um, along that corridor. Is that correct? That if I was using that accessible parking space at the rear, I can get to unit one through, you know, with uh, a wheelchair. Eric, can you answer that without reference to the plan on the screen? Yeah, um, so there would be a couple of different ways you could get into unit one. So, um, but reality is currently you could come, uh, if the rear stair is used as, as an access, you would be able right. to come in through the wheelchair right. and come into the back. Um, right. the okay. So you did. The, you did. The, you did answer my question. Then it's. It. Ha, it would be. You know the the inconvenience of it is that you would have to go through your second means of egress to access the common hallway, but when you're in a common hallway, do you only have access to you in it one? Uh, because it looks like there's a barrier going to unit two. Like there's a stairway. Am I reading right. that plan correct? Correct, and that has to do Correct. with the elevation change going. Exactly. Through. Okay, so theoretically, you do have a level floor, which is only unit one that can be accessible. I mean, my, my only comment is, you know, it, it just does not make sense to provide an accessible um, handicap uh, parking space, and none of your units have been designed to be accessible, you know, for at least one. Um, so I just wanted to make that as a general comment. But no further questions. Yeah, but we, we, we did so because the um, the lack of a handicapped parking space initially drew a building code refusal 
So rather than seeking relief or building code refusal, we incorporated the HP space into the plan. Right, but, but you understand, I understand the, yeah, the but theory ultimate, here. You, yeah, you have yeah. an accessible and you're saying, Perfect. no, the building's not accessible. So no, but, the, but my client did, did indicate during the hearing that he'd be amenable to adding um, a lift to, to accommodate that, okay. um, that issue. Great, thank you. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Hearing none, is there a motion? Um, Madam Chair, I'd like to put for a motion of approval with a proviso that it undergoes BPDA design review to, um, to work with the idea to allow for an accessible unit on the ground floor and to also just look a little bit to look at the um the roof geometry as it relates to building height is there a second okay mr stembridge yes mr valencia yes mr bangham yes Ms. Betabraza? Yes. The chair votes no. I, I think there's more work to be done with neighbors. Uh, the motion does not carry. Is there a second motion? Motion for denial without prejudice. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Betabraza? No. The chair votes yes. The motion does not carry. Ma'am, <clears throat> Ma'am Chair Sabi, I, I recommend just to defer this. Um, I would too. Uh, uh, January 23rd, 2024. That'll Is give there... the applicant opportunity. Can I have a motion? Motion to defer until January 23rd, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? <laughs> yes. Uh, Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Betabraza? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. See you then. See you then. Thank you so much. Next, we have case BOA 1463517 with the address of 3234 Watch Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain? Do we have any raised hands for this? Yeah, we'll move on and I think we'll raise <laughs> Yes, please move on then. We're still doing yeah. right. uh, next we have case BOA one four nine six zero eight one with the address of 1295 to 1297 River Street. This is a cannabis case. Is the applicant and or their representative present to explain? Yes, I'm present. I'm the applicant, Janice Israel. Please proceed. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Great. Would you like me to share my screen? Uh, you're not able to share. Please proceed. Oh. The, what you okay. said. Okay, great. Well, um, this is uh, for the cannabis business proposal at 1295-97 River Street. This is for um, manufacturing, retail, and delivery at this location. And the um, I'm here to ask for relief from the zoning board for two uh, proposed violations. The first one is 500 feet of a school. I have submitted the survey from Fuss and O'Neill verified surveyors 
that uh, if we take into account the impossible barriers, which is the method of measurement for this type of business, um, it actually does come up of 624 square feet and not um, on just under the 500 feet, which does come up currently on record as it does not take into account impossible barriers and it goes directly through the post office. So if you do true walking distance and take into account impossible barriers, as you can see from the proposed submission of the Fuss and O'Neill verified survey, it actually comes up as 624 square feet. The second violation being uh, too close to another cannabis business. The um, requirements is 2,640 square feet, uh, equal half a mile. This is coming up as 2,504 square feet away. So it's a little over 100 square feet shy of that requirement. And so I would like to ask for relief for that since the current business, as I mentioned, is retail, manufacturing and delivery and 48 Walter Street, which is the 2,504 square feet away the other cannabis business is actually cultivation. So not only are these businesses uh, very different, uh, but they're actually complementary businesses that could work together and really uh, bring some positive impact and um, economic development for Hyde Park by working together and having uh, these two types of businesses there. The area is um, coming up as neighborhood um, um, NS, I believe, neighborhood mall area. So it's in line with the other businesses as uh, being, you know, for retail. Is there any questions from the board? Okay, any questions from the board? Yes, I got one question. Yes. Yeah. I know, know that street's a pretty busy street. How's the parking, how's the parking gonna be on that street? Yes, so the parking actually um, is the next street over. There are 221 uh, parking spaces that are open to the public, and uh, that would be the parking. There are some dedicated parking spaces behind the lot uh, that could be for employees. Um, but as far as for the public, there is um, it's, uh, less than 250 feet walking. Um, if you know the area is basically behind the post office, and you know you could walk straight across the bridge um, to, to get there in less than uh, 250 feet. And all this is proposed for when the bridge opens for all of us in the area and know of uh, the difficulties with the current bridge being closed. Uh, this business is proposed to open when the uh, after the bridge opens. So the parking, yeah. you can change the um, slide where you can see the actual uh, parking area and the distance. Um, sorry, I don't know what slide number it is, but yeah. It looks like you only have one slide here. Oh, okay. I, um, I, I got one more question. How yes. is this maturity going to be around here? What kind of I system are you guys going to have? What type of security system? Yes. So the entire building will be uh, extremely secure. There are uh, multiple uh, points where there needs to be cameras inside and outside. And I apologize if that's not submitted, but I do have, um, you know, actually a floor plan that has the specific areas where the cameras would be. I, I may have held it back for security purposes to not have it as a, in a public forum, but I do have exact areas where all the security systems is. So this is actually something that's regulated by not only uh, Boston Canvas Board, but this is regulated by the state. So there are very specific requirements on how much um, cameras, surveillance, lighting, there needs to be in the area. And so it, it, it's actually, it's a, it's a lot. I could share it with you, um, you know, if we wanted to do it off camera. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of security. And then it's also, um, if you know the area, again, this is right next to the police station as well. Um, so it's gonna be a highly, highly secure uh, project proposal here. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And this is all real-time cameras with that will be shared with the police fire and it is shared with the Massachusetts Cannabis Commission. So they're real-time cameras that, you know, that any time they could, you know, look in or if I needed to let them know, alert them of something, they would have real-time uh, feeds to these cameras. Is this on the second floor? No, it's actually on the uh, lower level. Okay, because um, I'm looking at the building in front of me and it looks like it, it, there's a central kind of entry, you know, um, it, currently the signage says Driving Academy, WIC, and I'm trying to locate, you know, that main 
uh, entry point on river to this plan? Yeah, so I apologize that all the plans are not here. I'm not sure how that happened. But if you're looking at the building, if you look at it, the, there's, um, there's three entries into the building. There's one that's straight ahead, there's one that's to the right, and there's one that's to the left. So this will be the entry to the left. Um, and it, it is a, a somewhat semi-shared entry, um, but the, the portion that will be for the retail will be um, extremely secure and off you know, to the side of that. And how, how are you handling deliveries and pickups since uh, I'm, it's, I'm not clear where, where yeah. there's like a drop off or a loading or anything? I'm trying to see if it shows that on here. It may not show that completely. So um, there is a back door that would be uh, dedicated. There's three points of entry into this uh, space here. So there is going to be a, a back side door that's going to be dedicated completely to the deliveries. So it's going to be completely to uh, the delivery of the uh, product for the store and also for the deliveries uh, for the delivery business. And so it's a it's a completely um, separate dedicated door is actually a shared a shared driveway with the police station as well um and so that's where the deliveries will be located and this of course will be cameras as well thank you Very other You're questions welcome. from the board yeah is this an equity applicant yes yes i am i'm certified boston equity and certified social equity and yes thank you thank you Okay, can we take public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. This time the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, ONS held a community meeting. Um, there were concerns raised by some of Butters about proximity of uh, four to five schools in the area, um, including as the applicant mentioned, um, the refusal letter mentioning that there's, uh, they're within 500 feet of uh, an existing school. Um, there was also other residents that were on that expressed support for the proposal, uh, citing the opportunity to bring in a minority owned business that already has worked in other parts of the city uh, and could bring uh, jobs and other resources to Hyde Park. Um, there were some inquiries regarding the ADA accessibility um, and whether uh, the same experience is offered to all persons wanting um, an elevator in the dispensary. Um, the Belnell Family Neighborhood Association, the Hyde Park Neighbor Association were present at that meeting and had some conversations with the applicant regarding um, community benefits. Ultimately, um, our office received uh, three letters of opposition, one from the Reedville Wash Neighborhood Association, I believe, and the other one from the, I'm sorry if I'm gonna mispronounce this, the RRR, the, Ro the Roseberry Rusklindale Road Neighborhood Association. Um, so three in all, and then one in support uh, for this proposal. And as I mentioned before, there was a few residents that expressed support uh, in uh, the community meeting. Um, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Mr. Newman, of those uh, letters of opposition, uh, w which is like considered sort of the closest uh, neighborhood group? Or are they all overlapping? That's, that's a great question. I, I would not be able to answer that, I'm afraid, Madam Chair. I was not the liaison that facilitated the process. Okay, no, no worries. Okay. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Jordan Frias here from Boston City Council's Ricardo Royals office. We'd like to go on record in support of this proponent. Thank you. <clears throat> Other elected official offices, we could? Okay. So we have one raised hand so far, Kizzy. Can you state your name and address and tell us if you are um, in support of opposition? Yes, um, my name is Tuzi G. Um, I am a Hyde Park resident, and I'm just coming in just to say that I support this project. I've been in Hyde Park for maybe about seven years. I've seen other cities um, thrive when can businesses come in. Um, I would like to see Hyde Park have this one. Also, it's black owned, woman owned too. So I am definitely supporting this project. Thank you. Thank you. Damaris? Thank you. Damaris, go ahead. Hello, my name is Damaris Aponte, and I am a social equity participant for the Community Control Commission, and also a social equity for the Community Control. And I'm in this, I am in support of this black owned business in Hyde Park. Thank you. Thanks. Um, no additional raised hands. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? 
Hearing none, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval uh, with two provisos. One is that it has BPDA design review on exterior changes of any or on signage. And the second would be for the applicant to submit uh, a site plan <laughs> the, the, that we just have plans to understand the location on file. Yes, second. Second. Mr. Stenbridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Barbaraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Have a good day. <clears throat> uh, we will return and ask again about case BOA 146. 3517 with the address of 32 to 34 Lodge Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Can you raise your hand if you're on to this proposal? Edward Ty Tyrone? No, I see any raised hands, Madam Chair. Okay. Madam Chair, Madam Chair I uh, recommend we. You to deny without prejudice if the board feels compelled or to defer it to a later date. Uh, can I have a motion? Motion to affirm. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Barbaraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Chair votes yes, motion carries. Please reach out to the applicant. Yeah, the, for, the, for the record, it'll be January 9th, 2024 for the deferral date. Thank you. With that, we will move on to the hearing schedule for 1 p.m. First, we have case BOA. If any deferrals. I will ask if you are any withdrawals or deferrals. Uh, from this time, time Pardon? Yes, Mr. Secretary, 33 Pearl Street. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be case BOA 1451588 with the address of 33 Pearl Street. Would you please explain to the board? Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Matt Eckel with Fletcher Tilton with the business address of 100 Franklin Street. Uh, upon a uh, resubmission and re-review, an additional violation was cited by ISD, which had to be re-advertised. I believe it has already been re-advertised for the December 5th hearing. So at this point, we're seeking a deferral to that time. Okay. May I have a motion? Well, it's a deferral until December, December 5th. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? Yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Barbaraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. Here also votes yes. Motion carries. See you then. Thank you very much. If there are no further requests, then we'll move on to case BOA 1523229 with the address of 44 to 46 Winter Street. Is the applicant and or their representative present? Do we have a raised hand here? One second. Uh, okay. Mike? I sent a request to unmute you. Are you here for this proposal? Here. Okay, I just made you a panelist, so when you um, switch over, can you unmute yourself? Are you here to speak on this proposal? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, this is Mike Corey for the applicant. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike Corey, Madoff and Corey, um, uh, a law firm in Foxborough. We're here for the applicant 44 
uh, NOCAM 44, Inc., and we're seeking to uh, uh, a variance uh, to grant illegal use and occupancy of the premises at 44-46 uh, Winter Street uh, to permit a liquor store in that space. It's currently zoned um, for retail and residential use, uh, but liquor stores are uh, not included among the permitted uses. Um, the, um, the applicant through its co-counsel, uh, Andrew Upton, obtained uh, the approval of the Boston Licensing Commission for the issuance of a liquor store for this location. And that, uh, that was back in May uh, with the support both of the, um, of the uh, Downtown uh, Business Development uh, Association as well as the Downtown Residents Association. Um, if I could share my screen, I can show you uh, both the letter uh, from the Downtown Business Association um, indicating their uh, support. We don't, we, we don't share a screen, but uh, I think Mr. Newman will speak to that from ONS in a minute. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, the, um, uh, the residential, uh, 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 the Residents Association also supported it uh, as back in, in connection with the uh, licensing, um, the liquor license uh, before the licensing board. Um, the property uh, in question is a 2,800 square foot first floor retail space with about 2,500 square feet uh, in the basement for storage. Um, it's a 14, it would be a 14 aisle uh, store, um, each aisle measuring about 15 feet, selling uh, wine, beer, and liquor. Um, we submit to this board that the um, that the circumstances and conditions weigh in favor of uh, of the variance to allow the liquor store. Uh, the neighborhood uh, has a mix of retail and service businesses, uh, as well as residents up at the uh, up above uh, the first floor spaces. Um, but it's in need of additional businesses and an expansion. Um, of the variety of business. Um, as I said, both the Neighborhood Business District and the Residence Committee both considered the applicant's request to locate the liquor store at the location in connection with um, the uh, liquor license issuance by the Boston Licensing Board and after discussion and agreement with the applicant as to certain conditions and limitations uh, submitted um, their support uh, for the um, uh, the licensing board's grant. Uh, those conditions were, as noted in um, the letter of uh, May 23rd of this year uh, from the Downtown uh, Business Improvement Association to Chairwoman Joyce of the uh, licensing board. Um, and uh, with the, the association and the applicant agreed that there would be no kegs sold there, there would be no so-called nip bottles, no uh, alcohol-based window displays. Um, the applicant's principal, uh, Nilesh Patel, who's also on with us, um, uh, proposes to operate a high-end, attractive smoke shop uh, and has uh, operated um, in the, for the past five years or so at 44 Washington Street around the corner. Um, I'm sorry, he's looking to operate a liquor store, but he has operated for the past five years a smoke shop uh, at which security is rigorous um, with thorough review of IDs, all the while maintaining a robust and attractive retail uh, sales operation. That, um, that factor weighed in heavily uh, with the um, downtown business district's uh, support. Uh, they know Mr. Patel and they appreciate what he does. Um, there's no other relief um, that other beyond a variance that would permit um, the operation and opening of a, a liquor store at this location under the uh, under the city zoning code. Um, there's a variety of retail and service businesses uh, serving primarily local residents and um, daytime occupants of area offices and other businesses. 
of the establishment of a liquor store at this location, operated by a retailer not only experienced in maintaining a safe and secure age-restricted business, but also a businessman with experience in the downtown crossing environment uh, and, and with an investment in maintaining uh, and improving the business climate in the neighborhood uh, will both serve both um, local residents and businesses um, as, again, the associations have attested. Okay, may I pause you there and see if the board has questions? Sure. Any questions from the board? No questions. Okay, so I'm gonna take public testimony now. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office looks to defer to the judgment of this board. Some background information on the community process. ONS had the applicant uh, send out flyers to abutters within 300 feet. The applicant then went on to meet with the Downtown Boston Neighborhood Association and get their support. And also they received a support letter from the Downtown Business Improvement District. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a raised hand here in a second. Okay. Nilesh? We're going to give testimony here. I sent a request on you. No, I'm the owner of the business. He's the owner. We're talking about. Oh, all right, we have no additional raised hands. Thank you. Okay, with that, may I have a motion? Any motion? motion. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge? Yes. Mr. Valencia? <clears throat> You're muted, Mr. Valencia. Oh, yes. Mr. Langham? Yes. Ms. Barabraza? Yes. Mr. Aiken? Yes. There also votes yes. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, Thank you. Does the board require a draft of an order or does the board? Uh, can you discuss that with staff later? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Next, we move on to case DOA 152. 5202. With the address of 517 Columbus Avenue, is the applicant and or their representative present? Um, yeah, we have a raised hand here. Um, hi, Pat. Yes. Oh, hi, go ahead. Yep. So we uh, come today for a, a change of name of proviso for the business. We used to be a Cafe Madeleine to um, uh, Colette Bakery. Is there any uh, additional work being done on the premises? No. Okay. Questions from the board? Hearing none, can I have public testimony? Hi, oh, yes. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Kirschelli from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office would like to defer to the board on this matter. The community is excited to see this go in the space and they support the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. I have no more no additional raise hands. Thanks. May I have a motion? Motion to approve. May I have a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Yeah. Mr. Valencia. Yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Bedraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Good. Next, we have case BOA 1494509 with the address of 12 Caulfield Street. Is the applicant and or the representative present to explain to the board? Any hands raised? Yep, we do. Uh, Jared, one second. I sent a request on you, Jared. <laughs> Jared, can you hear us? Are you here for this proposal? Uh, it's not responding to the request to unmute himself, so. 
Oh, okay, he just became a panelist. So, Jared, um, if you can unmute yourself once you become a panelist, uh, we can get you going here. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, I'm Jared Scarpese. I represent Johan Stevenson, the petitioner from the law office of Jared Scarpese. I'm here to present the board for 12 Carlfell Street uh, for a variance and a conditional use permit and other uh, of relief here. Okay, please proceed. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for taking me here this afternoon. So my client, uh, the owner of the property, Johan Stevenson, is looking for a proposal, as you can see in the, uh, the, the, the best dimension would be that first paragraph. So he's looking to have all of the decking on the current property, which he bought. And he's also um, done quite extensive remodeling on the property. Um, so now he would like to add uh, those three deckings, as you can see in the stairs that are on the right side of the decking. Um, he's asking the board for the variances needed for the uh, extra deckings there. Are there questions from the board? Okay. Hearing none, I'm going to take public testimony. Um, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Ashley Gomes again from the Office of Neighborhood Services. Our office told a meeting for 12 Caulfield Street back in July. Uh, one of our attendance. Um, no concerns in regards to that meeting and no active civic group in the area. Um, with that, we defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Any other raised hands? No, no additional raised hands. Uh, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, can you read BPD's recommendation for the record? I can because I think Jeff Hampton is not able to get on the meeting. Uh, the uh, BPDA recommends the now without prejudice and that new plans be submitted where the rear access is moved away from the side yard and where the roof deck is eliminated from the addition. I, I wonder if the roof deck that they're referring to is just the top floor roof deck because all of them are decks. so probably they are seeing that the project is excessive um, in the amount of um, decks. Well, unfortunately, he's not here to right. speak. To <laughs> interpret that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I don't have further questions. Uh, with that note, uh, I'd like to put for a um, motion denial without prejudice. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Stembridge. Uh, yes. Mr. Valencia. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Bettaparraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Chair also votes yes. Motion carries. Chair, Chair, would uh, you be able to send me the um, comments from that gentleman that you just read off? Um, Javier, are, where are those, where are the BPA, BPA recs available? Uh, they should be available in the file, but um, the representative could contact me. I, I can forward it along at that point. Okay. Please contact the staff at ZBA. Thank you. Thank you. The next case has been deferred. And following that, we have case BOA 1528246 with the address of 43 to 45 Wood Avenue. Is the applicant and or the representative present? Yep, there's a raised hand here. Lawrence? Yes. Hi, members of the board. Are you the applicant? Yes. Um, okay. Well, my wife is, my wife and I. She's okay. trying to get on now. No worries, do you want to proceed? Is she on now? I don't know. Aisha? Is she under Aisha? Okay. Yes. She's actually going to do the presentation. Okay. Hold on. Uh, I don't see the name. Is she under a different name? Aisha Yassin? No. I don't see that name, but if you want to get us started, um, I, I don't. But she can raise her hand if you're on the call, if you want to raise First armor? Okay. Yes, that's her. Okay. So she's trying to get in. 
Okay, yes. Okay. Well, sorry about that. I didn't um, change the name. Oh, no worries. Please uh, okay. identify yourself and proceed. Sure. Aisha Yassine Celeste. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, I'm building a house on an empty lot, and it consists of two units. I'm requesting an additional driveway, and it has been approved by Public Works, Transportation, and the Public Improvement Commission. I thought it would be wise to check with the building department since it is a new construction that was approved by BOA. The building department stated that I'd have to return to the board. I'm requesting your assistance and approval to proceed. So you noted that you already have an existing driveway. So what's the reason for the second driveway? We need additional spaces. It's actually um, going to be two units. Um, so one side will have space for two parking spaces and the other side will have space for two parking spaces. Is there a, uh, is there a page that shows the parking that you can steer us to? This one? This the one? one that's, okay. The one that's shown right here. So on are the these tandem spaces? Yes. Okay. Are there questions from the board? Just to let the applicant know, um, it we, we don't really see this type of condition where um, a resident requests two curb cuts on one on one lot. Um, this is the first time I see see something like this. So there's actually two condos. There's a condo on the left and a condo on the right. If you look next door, each. Yeah, 41. There's about six parking spaces here, and on the if you go to the other side, which is um, 47, he has about five spaces, and across the street, where over here, they have about maybe 10 spaces, and and right over here, the next one across the street, they have about maybe six or seven spaces. Right, but what I'm seeing in the site plan right now is the the one that says number 41, there's only one curb cut, regard, regardless of how many parking spaces there are. And on your property, your request, there's gonna be potentially two that you know, you're requesting for one additional. Just an observation. Yes, ma'am. I, I don't have any further comments. I would also like to add that, um, and I'm not sure if um, the board is aware of the, the dangerousness of what have, but there have been um, at least 18 crashes over the past few years. Um, the most recent one being a four-year-old boy who was hit and run and um, killed. So um, I know that um, while building the, the property, you know, just to even get out of your car, it's people really speed on that street. Um, there was also a motorcycle accident. So there are just a number of um, concerns and, and circumstances that this, this particular request would um, uh, create a safety barrier for Thank you. Other questions from the board? Um, yes, Can were you the ones who originally started this in 2019 and are building the, the homes? Yes. Yes. Okay, so can you, I guess, walk through why the request has changed over that time? Uh, as Ms. Benabarat indicated, you know, there's a usually a, a single curb cut with some parking for, for a home and uh, even for a two family. And so that's unusual to see such a, a change like this um, while it's in construction. So just walk us through that, please. Well, that changed became, because it became, it's two condos. Um, most people want their own property. It'd be very difficult for two owners to have different, to have tandem parking. So what was, the intention in 20, what was the intention in 2019 then? Just wasn't thought out right. I think the other thing, what I've just mentioned, is is really around the safety concern. I think that we thought we would be fine with um, that that one um, driveway, but it's apparent that that I mean, it's people have, like I said, have been um, killed just based on people driving way too fast. I know that they've talked about um, potentially the, the mayor has actually talked about potentially adding. Um, speed bumps and, and other uh, things that could potentially slow the traffic down, but literally where where our property is located, it's the bend where people, for some reason, um, tend to, to just accelerate. Um, so the reason that I understand that speed bumps and other 
you know, things that would slow traffic down have not been added at this time is because it's considered a through fare or through way, I should say, um, especially for emergency vehicles. So, um, you know, it's, it's really just a, a safety measure. Yes, the, the, um, the motorcycle just got killed right here on the corner and the, uh, the, child got, uh, the child got killed right around the corner. So right here, if you look right here, the motorcyclist got killed right here and around the corner here, like right over this way, the child got killed getting into the car. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I have public testimony? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office like to defer to the judgment of this board. Uh, we had the applicant, applicant circulate a flyer to abutters within 300 feet. We did not receive any letters in support or in opposition. Uh, with that, we'll defer to the board at this time. Thank you. Hi, Bob, are you looking to give testimony here? Okay, go to- uh, Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, Bob D'Amico, uh, Madam Chair, and members of the board, Bob D'Amico, BTD. Um, as far as the speeding goes, that's a police issue. Um, that's not something that the board can address or BTD. Um, and secondly, uh, pu Public Works would never put in uh, speed bumps because during the winter uh, season, uh, mm -hmm. when you plow, it would uh, present a lot of problems. And like Ms. Barraza said, uh, I have never seen uh, two um, parking space, uh, two curb cuts for one for for one lot, and um, based on that, uh, those three issues, I'd like to uh, go in uh, opposition to this plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Carla. Hi. Um, I would also like to oppose. Um, more so, there is very limited street parking. Can you built. identify yourself and your address, please, for the oh, record. Thank you. Carla Elwood, 37 Wood Ave. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I, yes, there's already limited parking space, but more importantly, before um, an exception should be made or a potential exception, I think they should, the, the current construction that they're doing on that property on 41 is causing issue to mine. They just, uh, fence was damaged doing asphalt, be, um, asphalt being laid. Um, I tried to contact them via text with no response. Um, there's a crumbling retaining wall, so <clears throat> that has um, a potentially hazardous tree. Um, and they've been non-responsive to me to work directly. So, you know, before new things are added to the properties, they should deal with the problems at hand. Person. Any other um, th actually, that property has nothing to do with the other property. What she's, what she's talking about is 41 would have, and that has nothing to do with 43 and 45. Um, and, and what the true, the true thing is, this lady wants a, tea, a tree, tree removed. That's, a, that's a probably a 200, 300 year old tree that she wants removed just because she wants solar panels put on her house. So she, so oh. she, this, is, this is retaliation. Thank, thank you, thank you. Any other questions from the board? No, just for the record, we heard um, Boston Transportation Department put forward their recommendation by Bob that uh, posted. Can you also please read for the record um, Boston Planning, um, BTD, BPDA's recommendation? That's where I was trying to tax my ill, Ill state. It's okay. Denial. That's it. <laughs> With that, can I have a motion? Oh with with uh, our recommendations to the board with those recommendations to the board i'd like to put forward a motion of denial as well <clears throat> may i have a second second uh, mr stembridge yes mr valencia ma'am yes. may i say one more thing before you deny uh, sorry we're, we're in the process of uh, i'm sorry voting. thank you uh where am i mr valencia yes uh, Mr. Langham. Yes. Ms. Bedebraza. Yes. Mr. Aiken. Yes. Chair also votes yes, the motion carries. Ma'am, the transportation department already approved it. I don't understand why they're denying it now. I don't know, but a motion has been made and, and passed, so you may want to take that back up with them. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Happy Thanksgiving, I think. Well, I see you. Thank you. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks.